had a big windstorm come up. It looks like my pears are getting ripe anyway. So chickens are getting a healthy dose of pears and they're also good for buttercup, about 87% digestible, which is pretty high. Pears are starting to fall off the tree every time the wind blows. Some are still real small and some have uh, worms and things in them. Actually, they probably all have worms. We keep them all organic. So you can see the difference real good. This one here, ready to go get freeze dried. That one needs a little more time, it's real hard. All right, I know it looks gross. This is what we're dealing with inside. The worms go straight for the seeds, I guess. I don't know why, but it makes it pretty easy to slice out. So this is what I'm left with. That's one pair that I sliced up. Got all the, uh, the worm bit parts off. So I'll do this with all the pears and then we'll get them in the freeze dryer. All right, got the pears ready to go, not frozen. Let's do this. Okay, so we've got some fresh dill, cucumbers, and we're gonna get another uh, thing of pickle spears going. These are kind of large, so I left them as spears. I didn't want to slice them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this guy. I think I might slice it too, but we'll see. It's kind of funky shape for pickles. Um, but we're getting ready to put the brine in and then these are gonna go in the fridge for a couple days and should be good to go after that. So these are our little peaches off the tree. I, unless they got like a weird spot, like this is sap because it was growing right next to another peach. I'm gonna leave the skins on them. I'm gonna freeze dry them and they'll be fine with the skins on. As usual, we've got paint projects going right here on the counter with us. But Jamie, my peach, didn't even make it to the bowl. She got some raw milk from, uh, where is it from? Um, my friend Tanya's neighbor. Oh, nice. It's half Jersey, half Angus. Okay. And she actually was wondering if we drank it, if we'd tell her if we thought it tasted weird. Because we're used to Jersey milk. The neighbor asked that? Yeah. She's like, let me know how you think it tastes. We're excited to have raw milk. It's been since uh, end of May, uh, June. A couple weeks into June is when we dried Buttercup up. We need all the antibodies because it's back to school. <laughs> I keep two sets of trays for my freeze dryer so I can have one going and then I can pre-freeze the peaches while I wait for that batch to finish up and then we can keep them rotated right now while we have a lot to process in the freeze dryer. Meantime, over here, the brine for the pickles is almost done and we're gonna let that come to room temperature now that it's boiled and then we'll pour it over the pickles and pop them in the fridge. Sometimes what I do is put ice in it, so I'll put like a little bit less water than it calls for, but we got time, so we'll just let it. All right, we're gonna pop these in next to the pesto. They'll get all frozen up. Put your brine, whoops, spilled out. Just enough to cover the pickles. It is a beautiful, crisp 68 degrees. The sunflowers are gonna start going on me. It's getting real cool in the evening. I don't think we're actually gonna get eggplant before it gets too cold, but they're gonna try. Uh, and the beets are back up. Not, they're, they're not going crazy now that it's getting cooler, but they're back up. Carrots are harvest this week. All these little ch cherry tomatoes are gonna probably be red by end of week. Let's go take a look at those. Look how loaded these bushes are. There's a few in here. But we probably got one more good harvest before it starts getting too cold. And then it, the plants will probably put on more and we'll have to just kind of pick everything. We've got, I don't know what happened on these, why they're spotted like this. I think something got on them and they got I think it rained actually, and then it was real, real hot afterwards and it burned all these leaves like a magnifying glass with the water on them. But those are the cucumbers. Watermelons are doing good. Zucchini, we're getting like this fungus on the zucchini leaves. They don't all have it. So we're gonna come and clip those, see if we can make those last a little longer. The yellow squash has it pretty bad. They still seem to be producing, but they've got this fungus on them. So we're gonna, come clip these all back and the green beans here are just they're, they're they're like hey check it out look at us right here so gonna go ahead and get those all right now 
the tomatoes. Jamie clipped the tops off all these tomatoes. I'm not seeing any red ones yet, but they, they're starting to put bigger tomatoes on. So maybe that's gonna help them out. I don't know what the science is behind that. That's what her mom said to do, so we did it. And then the peppers, tons of peppers. Corn should be ready in about a week. This one got blown over, but it's like, nah, we're just gonna grow over here. These apples probably be ready in about a week. They're, they're still like pretty hard. They look like they're almost the right size, but they're super hard. So as long as they're not falling off the tree, I'm gonna let them keep going. And then the herbs, <laughs> all that pesto that we made, um, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be right back there. Look at this. They're trying to go to seed again on me. It's still getting plenty warm during the day for everything to be growing and doing good, but it's the night temps. All my pollinators are starting to go away. The bees aren't out as much. They don't come out until the afternoon. Look at these flowers. Oh, the marigolds are, they're gonna go. They're gonna make it these marigolds down here are hiding. <laughs> they're still super green and doing good, even though they're dwarfed by these giant ones. I don't even know what kind of strain of marigold these are. They're huge. The sun isn't quite over the mountains yet. You can see it's barely starting to peek over right into my garden here. And look at those sunflowers. Let's see what the chickens are doing. We need to get in here and clean up their pen before the uh, the snow starts falling. So in the next couple weeks, we'll clean this all up, get everything out of here. I need. I still have the garden uh, barriers that we used for the walkway from last year when the garden was in here, back here. The chickens don't care. They, they love digging around it actually, but it doesn't look very good. So need to get that out of there. I might take that tree out. They enjoyed it this summer, but it'll just be a mess this winter. Get snow all on it. You may notice I'm a little froggy this morning. I'm a little under the weather. Redrick brought something home from school and it's starting to go through the family. He's been sick for two, three days, something like that. I need to get a shovel and dig these thistles out. Someone mentioned that buttercup has no grass well she used to have grass and i don't have an irrigation system good enough out here to keep that tall enough with her eating it here she comes she heard me and she's ready for breakfast but it gets so dry and hot in the summer what i'm thinking and i think i've talked about this before is i'm gonna leave her on about hmm probably to this post here. I'm gonna leave that, her on that part and then irrigate the rest of this. Hey, good morning. Good morning, you want some nubs? Yeah, just came right up. Mm-hmm. Got a fly on your nose. Yeah, you do. Let's get the good scratches, huh? They're all good scratches, aren't they? Now it is time for my morning pooper scoop ritual. Right now I'm just getting rid of it because honestly there's so much and it's too hot to put right on the garden. I probably, I mean she's just eating alfalfa so I probably could get away with a little bit but you don't want to put it on there super wet and hot. So what I'm going to do is once we pull the garden out and get all those plants out of there is I'm gonna start putting this on the soil, hopefully before it snows, after it freezes, but before it snows, and leave that sit on there all winter. And then when we plant again next May, we will be able to uh, have really good amended soil. And this isn't free. I pay a lot for Buttercup's feed. And it's kind of a gross thing to have to do every morning. But this is the reality of having a cow, especially in the city. I don't have a big pasture for her here. She's on a quarter acre. She's got lots of room. It's not like she's 
on a feed lot. This is her area. We just need to get it greener and see if we can get this grass to spring up a little better and get rid of those thistles. All right, this thing's in here beeping at me. It says process complete. So we're gonna turn the pump off and I'm gonna release the vacuum on it, which is down on the side over here. Front door open. Let's see what we got. That's what you want. Hmm, pears are my favorite. I love pears freeze dried. I'm gonna go no defrost on it. We're gonna let this defrost for a couple hours and that'll drain all the moisture that is sucked out of the pears out. And then we'll be ready for another batch. Super excited about these. All right, Jack, taste test. Better than a regular pear though. You think so, huh? It's good, isn't it? And for zucchini, if you put salt on it, it tastes like a chip. Yeah, they do, don't they? Mm -hmm. I'm going to vacuum seal this down. I like to get them right in the vacuum seal packs. That way they don't start getting all soft. Because if you let them sit out, right now they're, they're still crispy. You can hear the snap. But if you let them sit out, they, they kind of get more pliable and they start absorbing that moisture again. Pears are my favorite but they turn so fast. This got this darker color while I was still cutting the others. So we ate through half a gallon of pickles already About from the eight. previous batch. And I don't even think we're having sandwiches. People are just eating them like dill pickle spears, but we've got slices with their uh, grilled cheese sandwiches and just for a regular snack after school or whatever. So we're doing more pickles, lots and lots of pickles. I'm actually thinking about freeze drying because I was looking it up and you can freeze dry them and then you can use them in like salads and like tzatziki and things like that. Because you Almost like a crouton? No, like, like pasta salads and things like that. Like you could rehydrate it. Like anything that you would put cucumbers in salad wise, you can do this because it doesn't take much to rehydrate them. So I'm going to try it and we'll see how it turns like, out. Like, do you cube them? I got to see this. I think we do need to like chop them up. I need to look up because we have an entire, um, like three quarters of a five gallon bucket still. And I just don't know how many pickles I can make. I'm probably going to have to thin these Cosmos out pretty seriously next year. Otherwise this bed may not sustain them. Look how thick they are down in there. But man, they're showing off. I've got a honeysuckle down in there somewhere. Come on, little honeysuckle. You gotta outpace these cosmos. This is the best view of them with the church as a backdrop. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no war. So I was just in the garden maybe like Friday and it's Tuesday, Wednesday, what day is it? Wednesday. And so many figs have gone ripe. Like I pulled four or five, but I think we have enough for jam. So I'm gonna pull them off and see how many we get. That one looks overripe. It looks like there's a bunch of figs still on here. So it looks like we'll get one uh, more harvest, but we did a good amount, I mean. Probably not more than maybe a pint of jam, but we're gonna go home and make some, some yummy fig jam. How much are you mm, About half a cup. Honey is a little sweeter than sugar, maybe three quarters of a cup. It says to do a cup of sugar, but I'm gonna just do three quarter cup honey. We're gonna add a little lemon juice. Lemon juice, salty. How did you eat that many figs before they went bad? will whisper the word maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope mm. so all those figs made about a pint and a half of jam maybe but it's pretty tasty and i did wind up using the food processor um, and then cooking it some more because i wanted a different consistency and we'll just put this in the fridge i'll let it sit out overnight 
and then we'll refrigerate it. Also looks like I got more cucumbers. I haven't even made it through the last batch. So I will probably pick the cucumbers and freeze dry them. Look at that. Cucumber, cucumber, cucumber. So many cucumbers. How do you know when cantaloupe is ready? I've never been this successful. We probably have like eight or nine cantaloupes. I guess I'll have to Google it. So Jamie just made bacon and eggs and crispy potatoes. And Cody, he tries really, really hard not to beg, but he can smell the bacon and he can smell the eggs and he weaseled his little way up here. After Jamie was done, she let him up. And he's still like sniffing around, hoping to get the bacon and eggs. Let's go get a treat, Cody. You want a treat? You're supposed to be filming me. I have no makeup on, no bra on, and I just got out of the shower. People aren't ready for this. They're ready. Cody. <laughs> Cody, treat. let's go get a treat. Come on. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Hey, right. you know better. You know better. Look it. Let's do this treat. So Rex, he stays cool and calm and collected. He knows the treat's coming. Cody, watch, let's do some spins. Spin, spin, spin. All right, you want a high five? High five, high five, high five. All right, try again. Oh, that's a good high five. Okay, there's a treat. Oh, good job, good job. Okay, Rex, you ready? You ready, Rex? Oh no, Cody got it. <laughs> Cody got two treats. How dare you, Cody? Rex, you can't miss. You know he does that. You can hear the freeze dryer in the background. It's still going. Okay. That's a good boy. Wait for it. No, wait. Sit. Okay, wait. Wait. That's a good boy. Don't be acting like you didn't get two treats. Buttercup won't eat this hay. It's got some, it's first cutting. She doesn't like it. She's very picky. And so I'm probably gonna be chasing eggs around in here until I can get it moved out. The chickens think it's an obstacle course. They're all over it. The peaches are done. This is about what was left that we didn't eat fresh from our little trees. I think there was a couple extras, but not a whole ton of peaches. I do them in these little containers like this because sometimes the kids will just get them out for a snack or they'll blender them up in a smoothie and it works really good to have them in the smaller packaging. It is 9.19 at night. I'm barely getting around to making dinner for Jamie and I. The kids have already eaten. Jamie's over there in the background. Oh, uh, like, let the record show. I am not. <laughs> She's editing the video editing. still. It's still not up. Uh, we, we call it uh, Furniture Friday video. Uh, she's doing that right now. You can see Cody's on her lap there. But we're doing some tomato soup. I do that from scratch because I don't add any sugar to it. But I'm making some crispy cheese because I don't eat the bread. So doing some crispy cheese. This is just mozzarella that I melted right here on the pan. You can add some herbs, some garlic, do whatever you want to it. Jamie is going to eat this sandwich, this grilled cheese here with the tomato soup. Probably some pickles mixed in there that we've been making. But the crispy cheese is going to go nicely with my soup. I already got one done over here. And then I don't have to eat the bread or have the carbs. I'm gonna make one more just to show you. And honestly, Jamie's probably gonna eat one of mine anyway. She loves them. It's basically like a cheese it without flour. So just throw the cheese on there. It'll start getting all melty. As soon as it gets toasty on one side like this, I'll flip it over and then crispy cheese. So this soup is just tomato sauce, half cup of milk. So two cans of tomato sauce, uh, half cup of milk, salt, basil, some chopped onions, and let's see, I don't think I put anything else in there. Oh, half a stick of butter. Okay, this is ready for a flip. Oh, look at that. So good. Pickles from the last batch we did. They're a little yellow because the cucumbers were yellow, but they taste fine, so we put them in there. And there is dinner. She couldn't even wait for me to take a pic. She took a bite. <laughs> 
And this is mine. I'm also gonna have some pickles, they're delicious and they'll go good with my cheese and my soup. We were gonna go and start painting the cottage, but it's sprinkling pretty good. It's gonna start turning into a rainstorm here in a little bit. The wind blew my pool pillow all the way over here. So with the wind and the rain, we might hold off. Hopefully this afternoon it clears up and we can get over there and paint a little bit. All right, so we're trying to do a staycation this week and Jamie took these hoodlums with us to the Costco and she's like, get whatever you want. Well, it's cheaper than booking a room somewhere and now we got food and it's not it healthy. It is not healthy food, I tell you that. But There's some milk in here. Watermelon. That's fresh. A watermelon, yeah. And pineapple. Anyway, if anyone goes hungry or asks me what there is to eat this weekend, I'm gonna lose it. I have a question though. If you're from Australia, these are these say that they're from Australia. Do you guys eat these? I can't believe they made these and shipped these all the way here. That doesn't seem Yeah, it says made in Australia. It doesn't seem cost effective or eco friendly. Yeah. It's... Now that Jamie's pool noodles are out of there, you can kind of see. We got some advent calendars, because apparently those go out of Pokey stock. Sticks. We'll we'll film it when we get home. We'll do a full haul. <laughs> So we come over here to feed the cow and the chickens. Jamie pops in the garden for just a sec. And so what do we have? We have tomatillos, bell peppers, and some cucumbers. Yeah, well, I figured these would be good with ranch for dinner and then kebabs. And then these I actually just touched and they fell off. So I had to grab them. <laughs> but there's so much in that garden right now. There's probably like twice as many bell peppers. And I don't even want to know how many cucumbers there are because I am so tired of pickles. I think I'm going to freeze dry some. I'm pretty happy with those bell peppers. Those are looking like we bought them straight out of the I organic grocery store. Our blackberry bush is not this large. This one's got this long tendril hanging out here. But the neighbors are out of town and they're like, hey, we're not going to have time to get what's left. If you want to come get some blackberries. Same story with their peaches. Well, it's probably the same story with our pear tree. Yeah, our pear tree, actually the neighbors were like, hey, I saw a guy like picking pears off your tree. I'm like, honestly, I've been doing so much with produce that I haven't even had time to We're get like, so all the pears. pears. Pears are not my favorite, they're okay. I love pears. These are pretty peaches and they are ready to eat right now. Let's go pick some of these pears that the uh, storm blew down off the tree. Okay. We'll give them to the chickens. Well, those ones up there are starting to look ready. Oh, so many blown off. How many do we have to put in there though? Let's fill it up. All these ones that are down on the ground have like worms and bugs in them and ants and stuff. We have all these little cherry tomatoes. We're going to have to do salsa with the cherry tomatoes. You know, you think they're for salads, but they're not. Oh, they're good. They're they're plenty good. You getting some onions for yeah. your salsa? I know I could just cut the tops off, but we have a lot, so I'm just gonna get these ones that are running. Over Look down here. They're just all in there. How's that apple, Jack? Oh wow! Look at that bell pepper. Yeah, it's a grocery store size. At least that's what mom said. Yeah. Maybe a little bigger. These pepper plants are going. Look at all these peppers on here. Yeah, we got a freezer. I think those ones are hot peppers. Yeah, these are hot, so they go a long way. These are Anaheim, but I grew from the seed. They're finally starting to come on. It was so hot all summer, and we're finally getting some more heirlooms. We got a couple early on, and then they didn't do anything all summer, but we're about to get lots and lots of tomatoes. All right, in case you're wondering, we are putting the hero quest to good work. The kids are here, Jamie's making salsa, Eliza was napping and got herself voted off the island for hero, hero quest. We are headed to Lowe's because it's just won't stop raining. It's been raining for like three, four days and I've been trying to get the outside of the cottage pressure washed and painted, but we're gonna go to Lowe's and grab windows instead because that's what we can do right now. We're gonna go window shopping, literally. All right, correction, we are going to Home Depot. Jamie wants to go here first. So we will check out what windows they have and go from there. 
So of course, every window we have is like skinny and tall. And these are like square, more modern sizes. So we're gonna probably have to custom order them or we're gonna see if Lowe's has them or somewhere else. We were hoping to get off cheap. We need three windows. We have an old antique door that we're gonna put that's like a French door, half of a French door. That I've only been hoarding for six, how old is Odelia? She was a baby. So almost 17 years I've had this door and I was just waiting for a project to use it on. Yeah, we need one pane of glass in it. But so this won't work. This is 24 by 24. That's too small. We need like a 32 by 32 window, two of them for the front. Or a double hung 24 by 36, which this is sideways sliding here. This Everyone's so, so nervous. It's Eliza's first time driving the Ranger. She's driven the golf cart a bunch and backed Odelia's car out of the driveway. Oh, the tree! Ooh. <laughs> the tree! <laughs> To so stay close to your side, if as long as you're barely missing on your side, you'll miss on this side. So, keep oh. going, keep going. Oh, hit it, this. hit it. Give it the beans. Go, go, go. Give it the beans. Pass her, Eliza. All right, stop. Eliza's over here trying to climb out in this. That was crazy. guy barely hanging on right here it's about 55 degrees this morning and i think he's cold what do you think buttercup what is that what is that the eggplant is actually thriving in the cool weather it kind of languished when it was hot but it's doing real good where is it right next to the weeds oh yeah there is one down there hot dog there's we're gonna like, get actually, some eggplant before the winter there's actually like three or four if you search they're beautiful plants i'm gonna grow them next year because they're pretty yeah they got those purple flowers yeah. i feel like carrots are kind of like lettuce these are the greens that redrick cut off thinking that they were herbs and they're all back tall let's oh let's see if i can get a carrot out here they're pretty big it's a good sized carrot. I'm gonna go rinse this and give it to Buttercup. Next week we're canning them, like it's happening. Yeah, we're gonna, but they're not super huge. They're still gonna be real sweet and tasty. So we'll can these up and do probably, oh, seven or eight quarts of carrots sliced up. The funny thing is this plant right here, the volunteer, like this literally I did not plant this. Some bird pulled the seed from over there, dropped it over here in the, in the row. Yeah, I mean, they did good. And it's just like, I don't even These know. look like they're beefsteak. Probably. And there's another volunteer coming up in the zucchini right there. <laughs> and I think those are smaller. Yeah, those look like they're more like but a cherry. It's like growing in amongst the zucchini. It's, and the plant's like way back over there, but it's growing this way. It grew like a vine. Hey, girl. Oh, you're right up close. Yes, the greens are the good. Oh, it all just went in right there. You're so vicious. Yeah, such a, a vicious girl. Just devouring that carrot. What if the world had more of your smile? 
What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? To put in perspective, this probably weighs about eight pounds. <laughs> that plant was holding up a ton of weight up there at the very top. Look how big that is. The kids are starting to decorate for Halloween. <laughs> Chuck put that up there. It's good to go. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. I know a lot of you have been really anxious for us to get in the cottage. We just, it's harvest season. If you can't tell, we've been canning and gardening and doing all the things. Uh, that's almost done. We've probably got another couple weeks and then most of the fruit will be off the trees and most of the plants won't be producing tons of vegetables for us. So. Zeb is going to order those windows as soon as we get this video uploaded. So that way we do have windows to put in next week. We have flooring coming, but actually not for the cottage for my house. Yeah, you saw the floors when I was giving the dogs treats. They're actually not dirty. They're just chipping. We painted them twice now. Oh, they're dirty. And we are, <laughs> I think they had just been mopped though when I filmed that. <laughs> they just, it's hard to get them clean. And so we're putting new flooring in here. We're gonna match the rest of the house, which I'll show you just a little snippet over there on the other side. They look great, they're wearing awesome, and you know, you can't tell if someone, little speck of dust fell on them. We'll see you guys next week.